When the Book of Earth opened up its first page, all these tiny creatures were already there, living in the water. Here is the amoeba, a one-celled creature with no shell. Here is another, called a flagellate, with two little whips to help it move about. This creature is made up of a group of cells. Sea anemones like this stayed in one place. In order to get food, they moved the water with these long, thin body parts, so tiny creatures in the water would come into their mouths. There was one kind of creature that could be found in these ancient seas in great numbers. They are known as trilobites. Trilobites were the most advanced creatures of their time, and they grew in many shapes and sizes. Today, we no longer have these creatures, but they were around for a long time, at the beginning of life on Earth. Time went on, and all kinds of creatures appeared, and all sorts of experiments went on. Look here, this creature is called a cephalopod. It had its legs attached to its head. As time went on, all kinds of animals appeared. Here we have some that look like flowers on a stalk. They stayed in one place like the anemones. Some built rings of stone out of the salts in the sea water. These rings held their soft jelly-like bodies. With the feathery parts they moved in the water, they could catch tiny creatures floating about in the sea. Because they were so colorful and looked like flowers, they were called sea lilies. But they were animals, not plants. When they died, the stalk of rings collapsed and fell to the bottom of the sea. The waters were full of life at this time. There were creatures of long ago who, instead of eating other creatures, made their own food out of sunlight and salts in the water. As they drifted about, they thought, Hmm, I wonder what it would be like over there on the land. And so, they drifted over to the edge of the sea. The waves and tides caught some of them and washed them onto the land. They stayed there until the water caught them again and washed them back into the sea. The day came, however, when some said, Oh, it is lovely here. They stayed on the land because they had plenty of sunshine and air, which contained a gas called carbon dioxide that they needed to make food. They attached themselves to the land from which they could get water and mineral salts. And so came the plants. For the first time, plants appeared on the land. When the plants died, they left their bodies there, preparing the ground for other life forms to come. Life was now moving onto the land. While plants were trying out the land, two new kinds of creatures appeared. One of these was the coral polyp, which helped to build up the land by eating salts in the sea. The other was an animal that had a hard rod in its body. Up until now, the hard part was always outside the body. This was the beginning of animals with backbones. This animal eventually developed into the fish, but these fish were different from those we have today. They were enormous fish with hard plates on the outside to protect themselves. Then the land began to rise. Places that were in the sea became land and places that had no rain began to dry out. Some fish were cut off from the water. Imagine being a creature in one of those places. You need water so that you can live, but the water dries up. Fish, who needed water, began to think about what to do now, that they were on land. They had to change or die. So they decided to build a sack inside their body with water in it, so that when there was no water, they could still breathe. And so, the secret of breathing outside of water was invented. And so came the amphibians, animals who live partly in the water. 
fins were of no use anymore, so they changed and became legs to walk on. Something very wonderful happened when the amphibians came. The sound of the first voice on the face of the earth. A voice on the land. Until the amphibians came with their voices, the silence was broken only by the sound of rain on the rocks or the rumble of thunder. Imagine how exciting it would have been to have heard the first sound ever to be made on the land. Meanwhile, the plants had left the sea. They grew in great variety in size, eating and making their own food with the air and sunlight. The insects also came, so there was food around for the amphibians. They had a great time, except for one little problem. Because of their skins, the amphibians needed to be near the water to keep from drying out. Some wanted to be free of the water. They wanted to be independent and to be able to travel. They wanted to be able to eat plants that grew farther from the water. But how? They thought and thought they would have to leave the water. So, gradually, they developed a special type of skin that did not dry out, and for their eggs, they invented a shell. Now there was no problem. These were the reptiles. They had a skin that could be in the sun and shells for their eggs so they would not dry out. Now they could move wherever they wished across the land. And then what happened? There were plenty of plants and amphibians. The reptiles had a good time and they grew and grew. Many experiments were tried. There was no one to stop these creatures and they became the lords and masters of the world. They took over the land and the seas, and they even took control of the air. Here is a picture of one of these creatures. Do you know how big this creature was? Seventy feet long. This creature had a head that was as big as a man's body. And there was something peculiar about this creature. It had a brain in its head and another down near the base of its tail, so that messages from the tail didn't have to travel all the way to the head to be acted upon. Can you imagine how the earth must have shaken as these huge creatures stomped around, feeding? These animals had everything they wanted. The little animals had no choice against these big animals, and so the smaller fled to where it was cold where the large reptiles could not live and could not get to them. As time went on, these animals who lived on the fringes where it was cold developed something to protect them from the cold. They developed hair or fur and a way to keep their blood warm without sunlight. These were the first birds and first mammals. What about their eggs? They knew very well what happened to eggs that were left alone. So, some began to carry them inside their bodies. The birds, however, could not carry their eggs and still fly, so they built nests for their eggs. One of the birds always stayed with the eggs until the babies were hatched and fed them until they were big enough to leave the nest. The mammals kept their eggs inside them, and when the babies were born, they fed them with their own milk. This was very new. No other animal ever did this before. Other animals just left their eggs, and some of the eggs were eaten by other animals. The young ones had to look after themselves, but the children of the birds and mammals remained with their parents until they could take care of themselves. The weather began to change again. It began to get colder and colder. The dinosaurs disappeared though no one is really sure why this happened. Then, the mammals took over. They grew and grew. They were able to go everywhere. There were giant animals, giant pigs, giant hippopotami, and giant elephants. The mammals had a good time, even as it got colder, and huge sheets of ice covered much of the earth. 
the mammals moved all over the earth in search of food and warm weather. In the end, none of the giant mammals were able to survive. Something very exciting happened toward the end of a very cold period. A completely new kind of creature emerged. It did not have sharp teeth to eat with, nor huge claws to fight with, nor fur. But it had something that none of the others had. It had a larger brain, and it had the power to think and imagine. This creature also had an enormous amount of love. It was different from the other animals, because this animal could go beyond the love of its own children. It could love others, even others it would never see. This creature was the human being. You see, it was as if all of this had to happen in order for man to come. Human beings would not have found it possible to live if they'd come here in the Cambrian period or when the plants were first trying out the land in the Silurian period. At the end, though, everything was ready. If the earth had a voice, it would have said, I have spread myself thick with carpets of grass for your feet so you can walk on soft ground. I have put flowers in my hair and covered myself with jewels for your pleasure. My cupboards are full of milk, meats, fruits, and vegetables for you to eat. Down in the cellars are coal and iron. All of me is ready. It is time for you, human beings, to come. And so we are here. This was all prepared for us. And now we are part of the story.